That is simply a hunt for citizens of Ukraine announced by the aggressor. According to the official data, 14 Ukrainian citizens are detained on politically motivated charges. According to the security service reports, there are 108 people who are being illegally detained in the militant-occupied areas of Ukraine. Four hundred ninety-six people are missing, and we are doing everything possible to find them and return them home to their families. The list keeps growing. The number of Ukrainians hostages from Crimea and partially Russia is increasing daily. It is difficult to say how many Ukrainians have been detained on the Kremlin's order. All of them come from different professional backgrounds. A pensioner, a builder, a farmer, a teacher, a historian, a film director, an entrepreneur, an activist, a journalist. Despite their occupation and ethnicity, they have one thing in common. They are prisoners of the Kremlin. The decision on the fate of our countrymen illegally held in Russia is made by one single person. Roman Sushchenko was born in 1969 in Cherkasy. He graduated from Tarashevchenko National University of Kyiv, Department of Journalism. He is married and has two children. I have accidentally got to know about the arrest of Roman. Russian human rights activists who have access to the Lefortovo court of Moscow informed me. Unfortunately, neither Roman's family nor employees of the Ukraine Forum Agency were informed about his arrest as well. Zoya Svetova, who is a member of the Moscow Public Oversight Commission, has quite accidentally met Roman Sushinko in a camera of the quarantine department of the Lefortovo prison. She said the Ukrainian journalist was not able to provide details of his detention and the charges he faced. He said that he was suffering psychological pressure and the investigator did not allow him to come home and tell relatives about his arrest. This conversation took place on October 2nd. It was the third day of his illegal arrest. My heart bat and I could do nothing with this. In the morning I told my wife about my feeling. She told her that something bad is going to happen. A day later, our younger son called us and said that he would arrive. He was the first to tell us about Roman's detention. When we heard this news, we were shocked, but we had to brace ourselves and hope for the better. Our council visited us, and he told me that father was detained on the 30th of September. Neither the Russian law enforcement nor the Federal Security Service officials reported the detention. However, they were exactly the FSB officers who detained my father. On October 3rd, the case of Roman Sushchenko has been made public. Russian FSB authorities claim that they have detained a Ukrainian spy. Russian organizers of Roman's detention have done their best for the whole world to know about this case. Strange as it may seem, but the details of the case have been urgently classified by Russian investigators because of Roman's alleged attempt to find out the secrets of the Russian army. This case is of no particular interest, neither procedurally nor from an operational point of view. There is nothing interesting in it. The plot of this case is extremely primitive. Operational scheme, entrapment and arrest. They stated in the FSB that Sushchenko was trying to collect information about Russian armed forces. Roman Sushchenko went to Moscow just to visit his relatives. He arrived by morning flight and stayed at his cousin's home. Our nephew Victor, Roman's cousin, lives there. Probably this was a reason for Roman's trip to Moscow. Or maybe Roman wanted to attend Victor's birthday on the 7th of October. My father is in close relations with all our relatives from Ukraine and with those who live in Russia. His cousin lives in Moscow. A year ago, my father was visiting him as well. In the evening of September 30th, Roman was supposed to meet one of his close friends. Roman and Victor knew this man for many years. But it turned out that this so-called friend took the mission to implement security service plans and accuse Roman Sushchenko of a crime. He has already met him dozens of times before. It wasn't an exclusive meeting. He knew his companion for 28 years.
The news about his detention caused confusion in France, where Roman Sushchenko worked as the Ukraine Foreign Agency's special correspondent. The new Roman is an experienced and talented journalist with spotless reputation and who has been certified in the most influential European countries. They said that he is a colonel of the chief decorate of intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. He is one of the most active journalists I knew. I believe he was working 24-7 every day. Our last interview was about the arrival of Russian President Putin in Paris. Later, Putin's visit was cancelled. The visit itself was dedicated to opening of Russian Cultural Center in Paris. I got acquainted with Roman during the Maidan protest in the center of Kiev and informed about all the events regarding Ukraine. He was always the first to come and the last to leave the working place. This is a normal practice for the news agency journalist. But it couldn't be normal for a spy who, living in France, tries to find out some secrets of the Russian armed forces, which are the state secret of the Russian Federation. I was shocked when I heard the news about Roman's detention in Moscow. I think the charges against him are complete nonsense. I can't believe it. Oleg Yatsankivsky met Roman Sushchenko for the first time in November of 2010 being a head of culture and information center of the Embassy of Ukraine to France. The center has been constantly holding exhibitions, concerts and meetings with Ukrainian and French artists. He wrote good and highly interesting articles. Recently, a book, Paris 2011-2014, Ukrainian Citizens at Culture and Information Center, was published. Most of the articles in this book have been written by Roman Sushchenko. They wanted to give him one of the copies personally, but unfortunately, Russian FSB has illegally detained him. So they decided to give it to Ukrain Forum, the agency Roman worked at. This book is yet another proof that Roman Sushchenko is a true journalist, but not a reconnaissance colonel. Here's the first page. Here I express gratitude to people who helped to write and publish it. And I express a particular gratitude to Ukrain Forum correspondent Roman Sushchenko, as 60% of the book is his articles. And he simply cannot be a secret agent. But Russia tries to create some other reality. When I hear its accusations, it seems to me I read one of Kafka's novels. These accusations are a complete lie. Humiliating this man, Russia, first of all, humiliates Ukraine. French journalists show solidarity with their Ukrainian colleagues. Not by chance, Sushchenko was chosen the most dangerous enemy for Russian secret services. He is a representative of the State Information Agency. He was accredited by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of France. He covered significant events, in particular meeting of the Normandy Forum, and wrote good analytical articles. Roman has a good reputation. He's been thoroughly preparing his articles. Roman's parents are journalists as well, while he is a member of the National Union of Journalists of Ukraine. So this is an absurd to accuse him of being a diversionist who pretended to be a journalist. We think that Russia's version is a complete absurd. The majority of Roman's analytical articles aim to expose Kremlin's and Putin's policy. He showed the technologies Russian propaganda employs in Europe, in particular how Russians recruit their agents of influence and how do they frame the hybrid war Russia wages against Ukraine. One of the brightest examples of Roman's articles regarding this topic is three men in a boat, to say nothing of Putin. Roman Sushchenko has written numerous articles destroying the myths of the so-called Russian world. He often tried to title his materials in a relevant and interesting way. For example, the Russian legend of Crimea and Khrushchev adapted for Paris, or the lies about Maidan, director Paul Moreira's moment of glory. Roman's colleagues say it could be his weed that might have attracted Russian Federal Security Service's attention. I should say Roman has literally stuck his neck out. That might have influenced the situation. I think Roman was entrapped. Obviously, they used the opportunity when he came to Moscow and entrapped him. Recently, the media have revealed the information that the Russian FSB has started collecting information on Sushchenko, yet in 2015. Some say the FSB has even tried to recruit the journalist. However, in vain. They used to say in the Soviet KGB, for every man there is a law to convict him under. Thus, Roman Sushchenko was accused of espionage. The main intelligence directorate of the Defense Ministry of Ukraine issued a statement saying that Russian FSB report on Sushchenko's activities is a complete lie. Nevertheless, it hasn't influenced the process. 
Our council was allowed to attend Roman Sushchenko a few weeks later. It's an outrageous violation of the international law. Sushchenko's case is the background of relations between Russia and Ukraine, military relations in fact, a kind of hybrid war, undeclared war. It is a part of the ongoing war. Journalists are soldiers on the informational battlefield, despite the fact that they didn't choose this path. The fate made the choice for them, and it is clear that the trap Roman got himself into was formed precisely because he is a journalist, an outstanding one. It is obviously in the interest of our enemy. The arrogance, the fact that they banned lawyers and consuls from visiting Roman, the fact that they fabricated claims against him, all these facts clearly demonstrate that Moscow wants to send a message to Ukrainian journalists, saying, you better refrain from going to us. Do not report, do not check the facts. We don't want to see this. It is a signal warning us of a great danger. He is not the only one accused of espionage. There are two more people, but with way more prosaic cases. In his case, it all comes down to the fact that he is a journalist. This is an attempt to intimidate journalists who try to work on Russia's territory. As of today, search for spies and saboteurs is nearly the most important occupation for Russian secret services. Every week, every other day, valiant protectors of the Russian law and order disclose in China's plans of Kyiv authorities throughout Russia and in the occupied territories. All this information massively circulates through the controlled media. As it was in the days of the USSR, the media creates the atmosphere of the enemy never sleeps in society. And with such hysteria in society, there is no need to convince the people that Russia needs to arm itself, as there are evil fascists, the Junta, right on the doorstep. And to demonstrate this, Russia simply has to detain any citizen of Ukraine and literally knock the desired story out of the detainee. Absolutely every citizen of Ukraine who is currently in the territory of the Russian Federation is a potential prisoner of Russia. Because Russia is a lawless country and they can't get arrested there on any charge or any suspicion. As long as they get arrested, their fate is in fact at Russia's mercy. Often tortured during the investigation, before an independent lawyer is allowed access to them. For example, it happened so with the Ukrainian Stanislav Klich and Mykola Karpyuk. They suffered the most. They were subjected to electric shock. Apparently, psychotropic substances were used as well. And it will probably influence their lives forever. All those cases are often mentioned in Russian news reports and are used for propaganda purposes by the Russian Federation. Crimean native Hanadi Afanasyev can tell a lot about the Russian system of justice. He is a former political prisoner of the Kremlin. He was accused of organizing terrorist attacks and involvement in the activities of the right sector, Ukrainian nationalist organization. Russians use different methods to make Afanasyev admit his guilt. I was detained on the 9th of May during the victory parade. They accused me of the intention to blow up the Eternal Fire Monument. They had no evidence at all. After that, I was cruelly tortured for 10 days. They used gas masks, I was subjected to electric shock, and they have been drowning me in vomit. Then I was sent to the FSB prison in Moscow, where I was kept for one and a half years. I had no chance to meet my relatives and lawyers. Their task is to make prisoners admit their guilt. After that, the tortures continue so that they can receive testimony about other persons and arrest them. Hennady Afanasyev has spent almost two years in prison. He was sentenced to seven years in high-security prison. Afanasyev returned to Ukraine only because human rights activists confirmed that he was a citizen of Ukraine. What is more, Hennady Afanasyev and a 73-year-old political prisoner, Yuri Yasushenko, needed medical assistance. They were exchanged for two Russians involved in the tragic events in Odessa on May 2, 2014. Scientists who voiced their support of Ukraine, journalists who were telling the truth and those people who stated that Donetsk was illegally seized by Russian troops, all of them suffered for their views. 
которая тоже сказала, что Донец незаконно был захвачен российскими войсками. Они все пострадали. Не страшнейше, что Россия туди, как держава террорист, Russia as a terrorist state takes hostages and demands recognizing Crimea as Russian territory. It demands Ukraine to grant amnesty to terrorists and accept the political chapters of the Minsk Accords, that is to grant militants security and humanitarian assistance. These are the goals Russia pursues and the whole world witnesses it. On the first day of detention, Roman Swishenko was deprived of food and water. He was under constant psychological pressure. According to Informational Resistance Group, they've taken away his clothes in the Lafort of a prison. Lawyers admit that it was done in order to record fake videos about his alleged espionage activities on the territory of Russia. Moreover, thus Russian security services also aim at discrediting the state news agency. І тут не випадково саме, що це Роман Сущенко, журналіст, який працював у Парижі. Найближчим часом з'являться публікації... Along with Roman's lawyer Mark Fagin, I suppose that a number of articles and videos showing our Ukraine form news agency a kind of spiring center are likely to appear in the nearest future. The emphasis would be made on journalist Roman Sushchenko, who worked in Paris being a spy in Russia at the same time. Sanctioned Russia wants to show the West the so-called truth Face of Ukraine, obviously created by the Russian media. This sends a powerful message to those Ukrainian journalists who plan any working or personal visits to Russia. One can be sure that Russian authorities disregard the rights of Ukrainian journalists. It is impossible to doubt the fact that Roman Sushchenko is a journalist. While Russia attempts to call his work a cover, it is a clear propaganda by Russian investigatory bodies that are interested in representing every Ukrainian journalist, a foreign agent or a spy. I should say I was also included in the list of agents working for Ukrainian intelligence. The Russian Federation tries to make the whole world think that Ukraine tries to perform terrorist attacks and other sabotage activities involving its agents. Thus, the Russian Federation tries to distort the reality, divert attention from its aggression against Ukraine and to show the world some stupid picture that doesn't exist at all. Russia accuses citizens of Ukraine of terrorism or espionage only because they are patriots of Ukraine. They hadn't committed any crimes in or against Russia. Their main guilt is that they are citizens of Ukraine. They state in the International Federation of Journalists that the case of Roman Sushchenko is fake and he should be released. Reporters Without Borders has made a similar statement. The UNESCO representatives have also promised to assist in the release of the journalist. The OSCE Commissioner for Freedom of Media, Dunya Miatovic, said that she has already requested the Russian Foreign Ministry to provide explanations. But despite all the calls of the international community, the Lefortovo court in Moscow has extended the arrest of the illegally detained journalist until the 30th of April 2017. The Security Service of Ukraine reported that Sushchenko was included in the prisoner's exchange list prepared by the Joint Center for Hostages Release. Yet it is difficult to predict what will happen next. After all, Sushchenko's fate isn't discussed in Minsk. President of Ukraine raised the question about Roman Sushchenko's fate during the normative four talks. But it seems to me the process of releasing Roman from prison will not be quick. Being an aggressor, Russia needs to have the living mechanism, political prisoners and hostages, to blackmail Ukraine. Roman Sushchenko is a political prisoner who was illegally detained by the Russian Federal Security Service on baseless politically invented accusations. This is not an isolated case, because Russia performs this scenario of continuing aggression against Ukraine. We use absolutely every possible channel of information delivery as well as negotiators. And not only officials who are participating in the Minsk process are involved, they are also volunteers, nameless heroes of negotiations as well as representatives of churches of different denominations. 
если бы это зависело от первых лиц Украины, они бы это сделали немедленно, отдали кого угодно. I do believe that if it was up to Ukrainian top officials, they would have done it immediately. They are not the problem. The problem is the Russian side. There is no hurry at all on their part. No one is motivated to start something, to force negotiations on the exchange or to take any action. Only international pressure and the current active position of the Ukrainian leadership will make them do something. According to Article 276 of the Criminal Code of the Russian Federation, the journalist accused of espionage could face up to 20 years in prison. Few believe that the Kremlin famous will declare Sushchenko not guilty. Currently, he is in the famous detention facility Lefortovo in the eastern part of Moscow. There, they usually keep those accused of crimes against Russia. Roman does not admit his guilt. The trial may be delayed, so it is extremely important to enlist international support and to call on the Kremlin to release the prisoner. Our top priority task is an external international pressure on the Russian authorities, and we are making efforts to exert the outside pressure to widen the solidarity with our colleague Roman Sushchenko, arrested in a trumped-up case. I would be very glad to see all Ukrainians united to free Roman as soon as possible, and not only Ukrainians, but also citizens of other countries. Ukrainians in France and abroad and the French. Because he worked in France, I really would like to see the French contribution to free Roman as quickly as possible. Roman, we are with you. We can only hope that under the French, Ukrainian and international pressure, he will soon be released. We stake all our hopes on this. Yulia Sushchenko shares the latest news. They have received a letter from Dad. It has been almost a month. Phone calls are prohibited, and so are the visits. He writes that worries about the family which was left without a breadwinner. Also about parents, because they are elderly. He believes that everything happens in this life for a reason. Therefore, sooner or later, the good will conquer the evil. He has also conveyed special thanks to all for the letters of support. When he understood that the whole of Ukraine supports him, colleagues, relatives, friends and just caring people, he regained his spirits, he realized that he is not alone. I thank all those who support our son, who help us to release him and make him return home as soon as possible. I express the gratitude of a mother. And you, my son, hold on. We've pulled ourselves together. We are holding on and waiting for Roman. Papa, I love you very much. I want you to come to me. Daddy, I miss you so much. I want you to come back to me. The whole Ukraine supports you, Daddy. You will not stay there for long. I'm with you, and the whole Ukraine is with you. We love and miss you. We love you.